Number 10, astronaut sightings. Who better to trust about what's going on in space than people who have actually been to space before? That's right, numerous astronauts over the years have reported seeing things that they think might be UFOs. Buzz Aldrin was one of the astronauts aboard the Apollo 11, and during their journey, they all reported seeing flying objects. Of course, space debris exists, and it could just be some metal junk that was adrift in space. But then, why did they report that the objects appeared to be falling? them. When they thought that it might have just been a detached part of the rocket that was flying alongside them, they were informed that this piece was actually 6,000 miles away from them, and they definitely wouldn't have been able to see it from that far away. He also said that when they brought it up, they were briefed to not talk about what they had seen out in space. Well, the government can try all they want to cover things up, but eventually, word always gets out. Number 9. Jacob's Ladder The Bible survives off of continued attempts at interpretation the story of Jacob's Ladder is no exception. The tale goes that Jacob was on his way to Haran and had stopped for a rest. While he slept, he had a pretty trippy dream. He dreamt that angels were ascending and descending upon a stairway a stairway to heaven that was resting on the earth. Jacob saw the Lord in the heavens above the ladder, and the Lord told him to go in every direction, spreading the word. Which kind of sounds like a ladder from a spaceship touched down, and the aliens were like, hey, tell people so we can, I don't know, have dinner or something. Like, we might be able to have a last supper before we leave. Sorry, what? Was it just a fever dream, or did Jacob accidentally wake up during a space invasion? Number eight, Ezekiel 1128. While the prophet was being held captive at Babylon in 594 BCE, Ezekiel, like the bread, had an intense vision that has sparked a lot of discourse surrounding a potential alien visitation. Firstly, it involves the cherubim, which, as I mentioned, had to be some sort of extraterrestrial. But there is an allusion to, um, well, a spacecraft. Here is the actual passage. As I looked, behold, a stormy wind came out of the north, and a great cloud with brightness around it, and fire flashing forth continually, and in the midst of the fire, as it were, gleaming metal, and from the midst of it came the likeness of four living creatures, and this was their appearance. They had a human likeness." Unquote. So gleaming metal, human likeness. Everyone's thinking it, I'm just saying it. Aliens. Also, if you're going to give me hate in the comments for like, I don't know, blasphemy, you clicked on this video, you knew what it was going to be about. Just saying. Number seven, the ascension of Elijah. A lot has changed since the Bible was first written. We've learned a lot since the Bible was first created. One, that the earth is not flat, that we actually orbit around the sun, that the stars are actually giant balls of gas constantly combusting, and that there is a strong possibility that life exists out there in the universe. So now, when modern onlookers take a look at the tales from the Bible, some new ideas are coming to the surface. For instance, what if the ascension of Elijah was actually an early alien abduction? The Bible describes that he was taken up by the Lord in a chariot of fire. Fire. The chariot of fire is the main point we are focusing on here. Given how many modern UFO sightings talk about bright lights moving in the sky, could this chariot have been a UFO? An unknown, glowing, flying object that must have boggled the minds of us muggles on the ground. Maybe the fire was the engine shooting away. Now that's a revelation. Speaking of revelations, let's talk about Revelation 9, 7, 11. The flying alien locusts that are foretold to destroy the earth and I quote, The locusts looked like horses prepared for battle. On their heads they wore something like crowns of gold and their faces resembled human faces. Their hair was like women's hair and their teeth were like lion's teeth. They had breastplates like breastplates. They had breastplates like breastplates of iron and the sound of their wings was like the thundering of many horses and chariots rushing into battle. They had tails with stingers like scorpions, and in their tails they had the power to torment people for five months." Unquote. Flying alien horse locusts? Some theorists say that this particular passage describes war machines of the future, that perhaps whoever visited them had armored planes that could only be compared to what people then already knew. Number 5. The Flying Scroll Here we have yet another potentially misinterpreted image. I wonder if the ancients played the same game we play with clouds. You know, like, that's a scroll, that's the Lord, that's an angel. In the opening verses of Zechariah, they describe a flying object that's, and I quote, the length thereof is 20 cubits and the breadth thereof is 10 cubits, unquote, and continues to be interpreted as a flying scroll or roll. Though it's a pretty general description, many modern interpretations based on UFO sightings wonder if it was similar to a saucer or perhaps cigar shaped like others that have been seen in the news. 
Number four, the star above the manger. Now back to my reference to the most beautiful Christmas song ever of Space Band Came Traveling by Krista Burr. This is kind of how I picture the Christmas star story. That a spaceman traveled for light years suddenly touching down on Earth to the awe of the people. His ship was a massive light in the sky, which I wonder. For the three wise men to find little baby Jesus at the manger, the story goes that they followed the brightest star in the sky. But what if it wasn't that? What if it was an alien ship hovering over that spot, leading them towards the little manger? There is one such man, a UFO enthusiast named Richard Lawrence, who believes this was the case, and even goes a step further, that Jesus was an alien himself. When greeted with skepticism, Lawrence has stated, and I quote, I wouldn't call him an alien. I'd call him a great cosmic intelligence. But yes, alien, if you'd like, unquote. Number three, Sodom and Gomorrah. Sodom and Gomorrah is probably one of the more well-known Bible stories. It takes place in Genesis 19. You know, the two most sinful cities to ever exist. So sinful that God decided to level them to dust. Though he did warn Lot and his family to escape, but he did say that if they look back, they will turn into salt, which is exactly what happened to Lot's wife when she glanced back. In verse 28, Abraham describes the site of the ruined city, unquote. He looked down towards Sodom and Gomorrah, toward all the land of the plain, and he saw dense smoke rising from the land like smoke from a furnace." Unquote. Kind of reminiscent of an explosion, perhaps something as large as a nuclear explosion. Alien enthusiasts believe that this actually may have been exactly that, a nuclear explosion sent by aliens or that they introduced them to the technology. Even during the Crusades, where the two cities were supposed to have been, travelers noted that nothing grew there. Number two, the giants. The Watchers were described as a group of angels that served as the eyes of God, but they grew lustful and decided to take human wives. One of the verses in Genesis 6 describes this, quote, When man began to multiply on the surface of the land and daughters were born to them, the sons of God saw that the daughters of man were attractive, and they took as their wives any they chose, unquote. These hybrid angel children were described as massive, bloodthirsty giants called the Nephilim. Which Uriel later drowned the world. He literally, you know, Noah's Ark, that whole thing. Yeah. Now, what this could be was alien intervention with the humans living on Earth to see if they could breed, and it went horribly wrong. So the aliens destroyed them so they could start a clean slate. Whether you believe it or not, it is a theory ancient astronaut theorists cite when trying to prove aliens interacted with humans. And last but not least, the archives. The Bible that is in circulation today is one of many copies and interpretations. It is morphed between put things in, taking things out over thousands of years. And a lot of the original information is hidden in the Vatican archives. There are thousands of historical documents kept hidden from prying eyes in the Vatican and for some reason, Pope Paul V ordered a certain section of documents to be locked up till 1881. Some believe the information regards the enigmatic Giordano Bruno, believed to have met or was an alien, and even more suspicious secrets pertaining to the Fatima mystery. In 1917, three children apparently saw an apparition of the Virgin Mary in a field. Their vision prompted 70,000 people to visit the same sheep pasture and stated that they saw a spinning silver disc in the sky. The children apparently received a message from the specter that said, and I quote, we are here, we have been since thousands of years ago, and that they will return again." Unquote. The Vatican recorded these messages, but to this day, they remain censored and locked away. The three messages the children received apparently contain evidence of alien life. If they are so afraid of those messages getting out, does it mean whatever they said could change what we know of the scripture? Who knows? In our number 10 spot, we have a frozen alien corpse. Scientists have discovered this frozen alien corpse in Russia. It was found by two people in Siberia after claims of a UFO came to Earth. Allegedly, it was missed by the Russian military after they cleaned up the area after the crash. The corpse was pretty damaged, but the being was two feet high and part of his right leg was missing. Also, apparently this particular area in Russia is a hot spot for a UFO sightings, and there are a number of reports of sightings every single year. In fact, there was a sighting that reported seeing a UFO crash in the area, and so the finding of this alien corpse aligns with that sighting. Whoa, I want to go to Siberia now. If there is anyone watching from Russia, you know, from Siberia, please tell us of any other sightings that you may have come across in the comment section below. Number nine, paintings. Now let's go well beyond spaceships and astronauts and move into 
into the far more distant past. Because alien sightings certainly aren't a new thing and seem to have been around for centuries. One piece of evidence that people often cite is a painting titled The Madonna with Saint Giovannino. It was painted in the 15th century by Dominic Gerlando and appears to depict a UFO flying around in the background. Its shape matching up with people's frequent depictions of flying saucers as being alien spacecrafts. There also appear to be beams of light coming out from the bottom of the ship and this has led people to believe that it is unmistakably an alien craft and not just something else placed up in the sky. And if you take a look at it, it does seem hard to believe that it could be anything else as what other dark object would make sense to be floating in the sky like that. If you have any ideas, let me know what else you think it might be. Number 8. The Tic Tac UFO Back in 2004 on the coast of California, a US Navy pilot named David Fravor reported seeing something strange. In fact, he reported seeing something that was quote, something not from this earth. They were about 60 to 100 miles off the coast of California and he was leading a strike fighter squadron through some exercises when the incident occurred. He said that he saw a tic tac shaped vessel flying through the air at incredible speeds, but it wasn't just him who saw it. It was also reported by another flight crew who actually followed after the craft and even filmed it. While the footage was originally kept classified, it's now been made available to the public. The case was then published by the New York Times after the Pentagon acknowledged its Advanced Aviation Threat Identification Program, which is actually the Pentagon's own 21st century study of UFO sightings. Number 7. Wow! Exclamation point. The Search for Extraterrestrial Intelligence, otherwise known as SETI, is a group that, well, searches for extraterrestrial intelligence. In 1977, a large radio telescope outside of Ohio was scanning the skies on behalf of SETI when they picked up a signal that lasted for 72 seconds. The printouts of readings often included low numbers, which was typically just the background noise that the telescope picked up. But then a scientist noticed that there was a sudden string of letters as well as larger numbers. The letters went all the way up to U, which indicated a signal 30 times stronger than the typical background noise. Upon seeing these consecutive letters, which would represent a very strong signal and something potentially alien, he circled them and wrote the word WOW followed by an exclamation point in bright red pen. To this day, we've never really seen anything else like it, and the extraordinary readout has yet to ever be duplicated. Number 6. Viking Mars Now let's get into some more science-y factual stuff. When people think of aliens, the term that might often come to mind is Martians, being attributed specifically to aliens that reside on the planet of Mars. NASA has sent a lot of things out there, and one expedition was referred to as Viking, them sending out little robots to take readings of the planet. One test that they performed was done on the soil, mixing soil with radioactive carbon label nutrients to see if they would produce radioactive methane gas, this being a chemical sign of life on other planets. And it did, the test coming back with a positive result and finding organic molecules. But NASA just brushed it off I guess, because they said that the other experiments didn't end up with the same results, so they just said it was a false positive. But one of the original scientists and others who have analyzed the data stand by their discovery saying that the other experiments had just been ill-equipped for performing the tests and finding the same results. Number 5. Martian Fossil Let's hear from NASA again, this event taking place in 1996 when they announced that they had found a Martian fossil. They said that they had found fossilized microbes within a lump of Martian rock, a meteorite that is theorized to have been blasted off the planet around 15 million years ago before finally winding up in Antarctica where it was discovered 12 years prior in 19. They analyzed it a lot, of course, and found organic molecules as well as small bits of the mineral known as magnetite, which can sometimes be found in Earth bacteria. Researchers also said that under an electron microscope, they were able to see traces of nanobacteria. So it seems like evidence is continuing to stack up that other planets are, or used to be, capable of sustaining life. And with a universe as infinitely large as ours, it's hard to say that it's impossible that life on other planets could could ever exist. Number 4. The Super Hornet Let's now take a look at another piece of evidence that came out following the Pentagon's acknowledgement of their Advanced Aviation Threat Identification Program. This took place back in 2015 on the East Coast and is another video of evidence discovered by the US Navy, this time by a FA-18 Super Hornet, a strike fighter that reaches speeds of up to 2,000 km 
kilometers an hour. That's pretty fast. The pilots see the unidentified object moving at incredibly high speeds over the water and they struggle to keep up but are finally able to get a lock on it. When they do, they start cheering and one even says, what the F is that thing? They continue to follow it and seem to be unable to figure out what it possibly could be. This is another piece of evidence that had to go through a declassification process before it could be released to the public. Makes you wonder what other video footage and potential signs of alien life the government might be hiding from us in a file filing cabinet labeled classified. Number 3. Chicago O'Hare In November 2006, in Chicago, Illinois, airline staff and pilots alike were shocked by what they had witnessed. Multiple people reported seeing what they described as a flying saucer in the air. It was an overcast day and the UFO seemed to be just hovering over the Chicago O'Hare airport terminal. They then described how it seemed to shoot up into the air incredibly quickly, so fast that it punched a hole through the cloud cover above it. The FAA or Federal Aviation Administration described it as simply being a strange weather phenomenon and they wouldn't be investigating it, so don't worry about it. Of course, that's what they want us to think. But so many people at once reporting seeing a flying saucer shooting through the clouds doesn't really sound like a weather phenomenon to me. One flight traffic control official said, To fly 7 million light years to O'Hare and then have to turn around and go home because your gate was occupied is simply unacceptable. Number 2. SETI Readings now, now let's go back to the SETI project again. If you've somehow already forgotten by now, that refers to the search for extraterrestrial intelligence. Back in 2003, they were using a large telescope in Puerto Rico to re-examine around 200 sections of the sky that had all previously shown unexplained radio signals. All of the signals had disappeared except for one which had actually become stronger. It came from a spot between the constellations Pisces and Aries where there aren't any known stars or planets. The signal was emitting the frequency for hydrogen, the most common element which both absorbs and emits energy. Some astronomers believing that this is the most likely element aliens might use to send a message to us for this reason. The signal from this spot in space has now been recorded a total of three times and has left many people wondering if it is truly a signal coming from aliens. Number 1. The Phoenix Lights On March 13th in 1997, an event took place that was referred to as Lights Over Phoenix or the Phoenix Lights Phenomenon. On this day, hundreds of witnesses reported seeing otherworldly lights across Arizona, Nevada, and northern Mexico. There were two main events, the first being a giant V-shaped aircraft that had five lights on it, maybe thrusters, though it apparently didn't make any sound. Then later that night, there were a series of red and orange lights in the sky that didn't appear to move at all. And while air traffic control employees could see the lights in the sky, they couldn't see them on their radars. The governor of the state of Arizona at the time said, I'm a pilot and I know just about every machine that flies. It was bigger than anything I've ever seen. It remains a great mystery. And it really does remain a mystery. To this day, nobody seems to have any real or solid explanation for what the large spacecraft and the lights might have been. It was said that it was a military flare drop, but this came after their original original statement that they had had no planes in the air. And even a recreation of the event didn't line up with what people had seen, flares flickering and burning out after only a few seconds. I have an explanation though. It was aliens. Number 10, the cherubim. I've talked about cherubim in a previous video and I just have to bring them up again. How does something so terrifying start being depicted as something so cute? When you think of a cherub, you obviously think back on all the times you've seen babies drawn in frescoes and museums and churches, but considering the original description of them, they had to be aliens. They came from the sky and well, they had four wings, four heads, one made up of an ox, one a lion, one a man, and one an eagle. So, so you say, so what? They had an active imagination, but okay, fine. Except for the fact that the cherubim also traveled on some kind of flying, multi wheeled metallic ship. And did I mention they came from the sky? So, need I say more? In a number 9 spot, we have traces of potential alien DNA. Scientists have recently discovered traces of DNA outside some of the Antarctic caves, which could suggest alien life. From algae, DNA, to small animals, there was so much evidence to support the idea that perhaps there once was a lot more living species in Antarctica. They did not come across any animals in the caves at the time, but they still found this to be a great discovery and have reason to believe that they will discover more evidence as they continue 
continue their search, where perhaps alien life might be underneath the ice sheets as there are warm temperatures coming from underneath the sheets. And that would suggest that it might be a place they could easily live in. In our number 8 spot we have UFO discovered. That's right, in October of 2020, satellite photos of Antarctica were taken that had many people stop in their tracks. Surrounded by ice and snow and with some ice still on it, we see an object that looks like half of a flying saucer that is also a bit raised, casting a shadow around it. As the ice sheets continue to melt around the world, it is believed that is why it has now been revealed and it is also believed that this is potentially an aircraft from thousands if not millions of years ago. According to experts, Antarctica would be a great place for aliens to go to because of how sterile it is, so it would make sense to land there. Of course this is all speculation and there's nothing further on this discovery at this time. In our number 7 spot we have the Alaskan alien. On January 3rd, 1989, NASA's Alaska York station made a great discovery. They found an alien frozen in ice. Yep, an alien, just like you see in the movies with the great big eyes and bald head. Makes you wonder if perhaps the movies are showcasing these creatures the same because we've already discovered aliens and someone somewhere is telling illustrators to paint them a specific way. I wish I was someone that had pull to know all of this top secret information, although I guess if I was then I wouldn't be able to make this video as I would probably have a target on my back. There is no other information on this discovery as it is considered top secret, but it is definitely a sign that alien life has been to this planet. In our number 6 spot we have alien eggs. In 2015 it was reported that two friends were walking along a frozen lake in Utah when they discovered the most peculiar thing. There was a strange formation in the middle of the lake that honestly gives me shivers to look at. If you are someone that feels uncomfortable looking at a bunch of dots together or eyeballs looking at you, definitely look away. This has the same sort of displeasing effect. Small holes were seen poking out from the ice with a strange formation lying under Underneath them. The theories around what this is include a UFO landing spot, something that aliens left when they visited Earth, and the popular theory is alien eggs. There were some things there that were slimy so the two friends left them and that's why people believe them to be eggs. What do you think this is? Let me know in the comment section below. In our number 5 spot we have unknown frozen creatures. More frozen creatures in Siberia you say? Yep, clearly this is an alien breeding ground of some sort. Strange creatures were recently found throughout Siberia. Many of these unknown creatures were found deceased and frozen in huge blocks of ice. There are creatures that have never been discovered which are believed to be alien and even a species of dog was discovered that is so old it goes back to 1000 AD. Wow, well I guess we're all going to have to plan our trip to Siberia eh? I've always wanted to go on an alien expedition so this is definitely where I will be going next. In our number 4 spot we have Frozen on Mars. Okay, this one is like a little bit of a stretch as this evidence was not found frozen on this planet but it is evidence of alien life and it was found on Mars and Mars can get to a temperature of minus 60 degrees Celsius which is way past freezing so whatever. Imagine that this evidence was found frozen as it could very well have been. I just can't prove that and I wanted to share this anyway. <laughs> In 1976, the Viking Mars landers detected chemical signatures that indicated potential past life on the planet, or perhaps present life. Eh? An experiment mixing soil with radioactive carbon labeled nutrients tested positive, and even though other tests done at the time did not test positive, the original scientists and others that have reanalyzed the data still stand by the original finding there is definitely a possibility of alien life on Mars. In our number 3 spot we have aliens in the water. In an interview in 2017, ex NASA scientist Alan Stern spoke about the theory of alien life underwater frozen. He mentions that aliens are bound to exist and that scientists should focus more on water worlds. When he was asked about why aliens haven't been found to date, he was quoted as saying that there are many possible explanations. The great majority of worlds with biology and civilizations are water ocean worlds. ETs at the bottom of 
ocean worlds would be protected from the likes of deadly radiation from space if their planet does not have a protective atmosphere like it does here on Earth and exploding stars. He went on to speak about how ocean worlds are usually freezing cold and that these aliens would be living beneath a thick sheet of ice and that is what would make it impossible to contact them. Fascinating. I could totally see this to be true as there's so much of the ocean that we haven't even begun to explore yet. In our number 2 spot we have alien fossils from Antarctica. Whoa, this is a wild one. In 1996, NASA scientists announced that they came upon a meteorite that appeared to be from Mars. A fossilized microbe in a potato shaped lump of Martian rock was how it was described. It is believed that the meteorite was possibly from Mars and blasted off in a collision and wandered the solar system for, you know, approximately 15 million years before coming to Earth and freezing for a little while in Antarctica. After further analysis, of the rock, it apparently contained organic molecules and tiny specks of mineral magnetite, as well as nanobacteria. There is much debate about whether this fully indicates alien life, but a lot of scientists believe that it does. In our number one spot, we have a frozen ancient civilization. In 2017, there was a whistleblower by the name of Corey Goad who claimed that it was discovered that an ancient alien civilization is frozen and buried under two miles of ice in Antarctica. Apparently this discovery was made in 1939 by a German expedition, but it was only until 2002 that archaeologists and scientists were allowed on the site. Apparently Goad originally only knew about this secret expedition because of a USAF officer working in the program, but eventually Goad himself journeyed to Antarctica with the US Air Force to witness this secret project where they have discovered the ruins of a 55,000 year old alien civilization. Not much more was revealed, but hopefully in the next 10 years we will learn more about these findings.